Peacock 45 here, having too much fun again. Yep, SIG 226, P226, and Beretta 92FS. That's what this uh, is about. Since we had the SIG uh, P226 here for uh, a couple, three days, we thought, we'll just get out this other uh, war horse, the uh, Beretta 92. that's been carried by our military for about a quarter of a century now. And just, just compare them, give you uh, my impressions of them, shootability, that kind of thing. No big secrets about these two firearms uh, by now, right? They're uh, classics in their own right, even though they're not 100 or 300 years old. They've been around a while. And uh, so let's just, uh, let's just take a look at them, shoot them. As you noticed, uh, hopefully, they both uh, get the job done. They both hold about 15, 16, 17 rounds of 9mm. The Beretta has magazines that fit flush that are uh, actually 17 round magazines. Uh, fairly flush, got a little bit uh, larger pad on them there I notice. Uh, and I'm not sure about the SIG if it uh, has the longer magazines that just hold a couple of rounds or not. Not a big deal. Either way, you're talking about a, a, a truly flush magazine and uh, having 15 rounds uh, capacity. And uh, if you stick them together, they are, the grips are about the same length. Not much difference at all there. Okay? so. As far as the grip, they're about the same length. Now the slide's a little bit longer on the uh, Beretta. Let's put this one on top. we we'll compare them in some different ways here. Some ways it may not be that big a deal, but uh, at least to give you a feel. You might be trying to decide which one of these to buy, and uh, you know you don't get an opportunity to pick them up and hold them side by side or something. I don't know. We're afraid to ask if you could do that in a gun shop. I don't know, gun show. Uh, but they're both pretty good sized firearms. Design generally be carried, of course, on the belt, uh, outside the waistband, probably mostly, especially this one. Although there are people who probably carry them just fine inside the waistband, uh, I'm sure. I mean, there'll be people who will say, I've been carrying that Beretta 92 for 20 years inside the waistband every day, you know. I mean, that's just, some people just carry big guns comfortably, and, and you can with a good holster. You really can, and especially the SIG. So, uh, anyway. Two guns, you know, these, both of these firearms, and not an expert, but both of these firearms were really involved in the, the U.S. Uh, trials, you know, back in the 80s, you know, when we went from the Colt 1911, uh, 45, and uh, these, these, you know, the Beretta 1, of course, that's why it's being carried. Uh, the SIG, as I understand, you know, I've not read everything on that, but it did really well in the trials. And then, as I mentioned before, you get into the politics of these situations and pricing and, and all sorts of things, and you can read about that, and you know, and you, can, you can see all sorts of stories about that and what information is leaked out about the trials and which guns actually were the best or better and why was this one selected over that one. So it gets pretty political, of course. But uh, from what I know and have read, the SIG did really well in those tests. Maybe the best, but it did really well. Okay, and I'm not surprised. Great gun. And then so was the Beretta, and uh, and I think the Beretta has been tweaked along the way, and some of the early issues that that, that popped up have been uh, fixed. So both guns are fairly large guns. They are both double action to single action. You know, and you hear me talk about that a lot. You have empty mags in both of them, and uh, they're both clear. But they both, uh, let me go ahead and just take the mags out. They both, when you pull it up to shoot, have a uh, double action pull, generally speaking. Okay, if I have this in a holster, the SIG, the P226 Navy, and I'm going to carry it. It's going to be carried like that, hammer down, pull it out, pull the trigger, long trigger pull, pow. Then after that, of course, it's going to be cocked because the slide's going to cock the hammer. And then I'm going to have a single action pull. Most of you know that, but it's double action right now. You see the trigger pretty far forward. It's double action, so I have to pull pretty far, cock it to fire the first shot. And then, of course, it's going to be cocked, and then it doesn't take much at all to fire it the next time, single action mode, and, and every time thereafter, unless I put the hammer down. Okay, And then it has the decocker. If I want to put the hammer down, it's right there. Very handy. Put my thumb on that. Ease that hammer down okay. on a live round. No problem at all. That's the way the gun operates. You don't really have a thumb safety here or anything. Uh, you can just uh, drop the hammer like that. So your safety essentially is the fact that it's double action pull the first time. Long pull, pow. And after that, for the next 15 or 14 rounds, it is single action. Okay, a more sensitive pull. Just like on a revolver, 
double action revolver or single action, but a double action when you you cock the hammer, it becomes a, more of a hair trigger. A hair trigger is not the proper term, but a lighter trigger. Okay, same on the Beretta. You have a different mode of operation. Now, we're clear. Uh, if I want to take the safety off and cock the hammer, you know, it goes into the same thing. Single action mode. Once the hammer's cocked, I don't have much uh, distance to pull the trigger, and it's lighter. It's a pretty nice trigger pull. You know, pow. Okay? And it also has a hammer drop. So if I want to drop the hammer, say there's a live round in the chamber, then I just push down on the safety, put the safety on, and that drops the hammer safely. Believe it or not, I know it's a little creepy. You know, if you have a live round and you do that the first time, it's like, wow. Okay, but there's a block there, and it is safe. All right? Now, you, you are not going to carry this gun like that. This is not a gun you're going to carry cocked and locked. Or you can't lock it. I mean, you could carry it cocked, but no. Nah, Highly inadvisable. You would not do that, okay? Because you've got a fairly light trigger and no safety on. All right. So that's that's just you know, it'd be ready to go, but that would not be a good way to carry that firearm at all. You wouldn't want to do that. It'd be a no-no. All right. So uh, you got your hammer drop. Same thing. Just drops faster. You don't have the control that you have with the Sig. Uh, it just wow, it's down. Okay. So same thing. Pull it out. If I carried it. This is my old trusty Universal Glock 30 holster. I pull it out, engage. Oops, if the safety's off. You know, long pull, drops a the hammer, and then of course it's going to be recocked, the slide's going to cock it. Then I'm single action the rest of that magazine if I continue shooting. Now, of course, at any time, I can say I'm finished shooting, and I can drop the hammer. Just like that. Okay, it will not fire. So that's just your basic operation. Uh, these guns have been around a good while. Uh, it, it just occurred to me, you know, these, these guns are like same operation. They're, they're both actually used our, by our military, you know. This one uh, by some federal agencies and, uh, you know, Navy SEALs and everything and some others. And uh, this is, uh, you know, as we know, the Beretta 92 is issued to quite a few troops. So they're out there. They both uh, have a history, and uh, we've all read about that. And you, of course, get uh, conflicting stories. You hear the bad stuff. You hear the good stuff. And uh, you can even talk to soldiers. Uh, and some of them love this thing, and some of them don't like it. So anyway, they're both 9 millimeter, of course, the NATO round. And uh, that's what the trials were for, for. We were going in the 80s to the 9 millimeter NATO round. So it's just a matter of which firearm that we, we chose and uh, more or less chose that one, although, again, this one is used. Uh, so, similarities, differences. Uh, let's shoot a little bit first. How's that? <laughs> I like both these guns. They're pretty cool. Let's, you know what I did? I put up a couple of paper targets. I don't shoot paper very much. And, you know, as long as my safety's on there, I can rack rounds in, do whatever I want. I can't cock the hammer. It won't stay back. I've got a target on top for the Beretta. Now, this is really not fair. I haven't shot this gun in forever, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'll go to single action mode. I'm just going to shoot at that top target there. It was a little bit of deliberation, but uh, yeah, I'm not a bullseye shooter. I'm more of a draw and slam kind of guy, you know, just sling bullets. Okay, and I see they're pattering a little bit low. All right, so let's do the same with the SIG. Uh, nice single action trigger. I mean, it really is. Find some ammo. Try to keep my mag separate here. You're a good boy. All right, I'll leave the hammer back. Again, I could drop it safely. See, there's a round in the chamber. See, I didn't lie to you. It'll drop it safely. All right. Oh, let's go to the uh, SIG target. I guess for me, uh, again, nice single action trigger pull. Really nice. Both of these firearms have a very nice single action trigger pull. I'm not making that up. I promise. I, they just really do. So again, uh, as you've heard me criticize before, it's mainly the reason I am not uh, someone who just lives with one of these two firearms. 
uh, on my belt is the fact that uh, you do go from the double to the single. But uh, as you have seen, I think in a couple three videos, I have kind of worked with that a little bit, and if I practiced it, I could I could adjust to that. And I see how people do it, like like Navy SEALs, for example. You know, they uh, they they practice, practice, practice. They shoot, 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 and so it's not a big deal. Okay. All right. So let's do talk about a couple of things. Uh, what we like, what we hate. Uh, they both break down about the you know same way. You just like to slide back. There's no problem uh, breaking them down. You slide off and. And of course, you pull the spring out in the barrel, your configuration, not a problem. Okay, and then you slide them back together. Uh, the spring went away there, I think. There we go. Lock it back. And you're ready to go. Yeah. And this one, of course, it's really easy. You know, when it's pulled back, <laughs> not a hard uh, job to see if there's a round in the chamber, is there? You know, with the open top slide, that's a, that's a big difference. And this one, same thing. Lock the slide back. So, Similar lever there and take it off, take the spring out in the barrel, you know, just a typical uh, configuration. Okay, back together, no problem at all. I mean, in today's world, with all the whatever the MPs and Glocks and SIGs and Bretas and, and HKs, the, these guns of the world, if you have one that is very complicated to take apart, uh, what military is going to be interested in that? You know, what civilian is going to be interested in it? That's one of the cool things about these firearms is the, the ease with which they come apart, and clean, put back together and everything. So that's one thing about it. I like the uh, decocker better on the SIG, uh, as I pointed out. You know, on, uh, the, the whole business with the, with the Beretta and the safety uh, is just a little awkward. It's a little, uh, I don't know, counterintuitive or something, whatever you'd say. I, I, it's up there on the slide. I'm not crazy about that. Again, I could get used to it. You do have a slide lock and slide release there. Okay, it's right there handy, not a big problem. Your mag releases are both in the same, the correct, the correct, at least where I like them, okay? And, uh, you know, they, they, they just work. You've got the ambi uh, operation on this, of course, which is an important uh, factor, you know, if you're, especially for a military adoption, you've got to have that. So either hand you could work that with. Uh, don't really have that on the SIG, it's probably available, not a big deal. Uh, you can work your thumb around and you know around that just like you know it's not a big problem I got demonstrated before if I needed to get that off I could take my thumb around there in an emergency you know situation so uh, what else about it they both feel good they really do the ergonomics feel pretty good you put those in your in your hand they feel a little bit like a, a CG 75 in a way they just they fit like a glove in a lot of ways both of them have a little bit higher bore axes, especially the SIG. You feel like your hand is down a little further than with some other modern firearms, like a Glock, uh, maybe an M&P and some others. Uh, it, it's just, it just seems like it rides, uh, the slide rides up there quite a bit higher. Uh, you know, your hand is forced to be down here. No chance of slide bite. You're a long way. See that? That gives you an indication right there as to why it, it feels as though the slide is way up there. Because, you know, you, you, there's no way you'd get slide bite there. You're almost an inch away from the slide bite possibility. Yeah. So so that's that's the reason. Uh, not a big deal, especially with a 9mm. It's a very sweet shooter. It's not like you're noticing a lot of extra recoil because of that. But, it, but you know, it's there. And then you've got kind of a thick uh, thickness here you don't have in some, some other firearms. I don't want to keep mentioning Glock, but it's partly because you have striker fired. With a striker fired firearm, you don't have all the mechanism that you have with these. You need a little more thickness and size to have a hammer fired gun, as I understand. Uh, this one, the Beretta, a uh, little bit like that, but not, not, it doesn't, you don't have quite the feel of that uh, for some reason. Although, you know, same kind of affair there. You're a long way from hammer bite, aren't you? So, uh, so I know when uh, when I'm shooting uh, my Glock 19 or something, you're thinking, and people have commented, "Wow, don't you get a hammer bite?" I really don't. But the reason they ask that is because my my hand is right up there, so you're down a little bit further on the grip. And uh, in nine millimeter, again, not a big deal, really, not a big deal. Okay, you got good sights on both of them. The this one doesn't have night sights, but those are available. And uh, the Sig on this model does have night sights. Sig Sig light night sights. Okay, both are both are fine firearms. The uh, the Sig is 
yeah, two or three hundred dollars more than the Beretta, I think, in terms of you know price. I don't get into prices a lot because it depends on where you buy it, whether you buy it retail, whether you buy it used, and the kind of deal you get, all that sort of thing. But generally speaking, the SIGs, we all know they're expensive, and they can run up to what are a thousand bucks or something or more. You know, uh, it just depends. So, but both uh, seem to do well. Let's see if I can keep these mags separate, and let's take a couple more shots. This old Beretta, I don't get out often enough. Oh, what do we have? Let's go over the hill here a little bit. Let's uh, let's uh, hit the old gong. I don't think this thing has shot the gong lately. Forgot where you hold it. I guess right there. All right. Maybe a goat wants to fall. I doubt it. Fall. We'll try a turkey up there. He didn't want to fall either. I guess he expects to be hit before he falls. Let's see, right over there. Let's try the SIG. A couple of mags here. This SIG is nice. I'm gonna hate I'm gonna hate to give it back to the original owner. Alright, let's go to the gong. Not bad. Let's see if it shoots bullets harder. Knock over a goat. <laughs> I guess not. It has that same uh, uh, weird characteristic. You have to actually hit it before it'll knock it over. So pretty cool. Uh, my impressions uh, uh, are that there's not a whole lot of difference in the field. They both are sweet shooters and fun to shoot. They really are. Let's do something we haven't done yet. Let's do the old double to single action. Uh, just for kids. This is, again, not scientific, but let's see. I'll go ahead and make it hot. Hammer down on a hot round. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'll go ahead and get it in that condition. Hammer down on a live round. Uh, yeah, we're okay. I'll just lay it there. Point it safely away. And I'm just going to do the old... Uh, draw and shoot here with the Beretta. Yeah, I've got the Beretta here. All right, we're gonna go from double to single. There you go. See, I'm not used to a safety, and uh, that's something you've got to practice and drill. If you're gonna carry a gun with a safety, always carry that gun with a safety. And, and practice, 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 and don't be switching back and forth. It, that's my advice. It really is. Uh, so let's take the safety off. I would carry, if I were carrying this firearm, I don't know what your trainer or, or, or whoever would advise, but it has a long trigger pull, double action. I would carry it with the safety off. Okay, I know that sounds like something uh, that's dangerous, but that's the way I would carry it. And I think most people would, pros would, right? Okay, so we got a long trigger pull. Hammer back down. All right, again. Let's uh, take the safety off, though. I could get used to it as long as I remember to keep that safety off or if I'm going to have it on train my thumb and my brain to know that it's on let's try the SIG all right same thing we're hot no safety to, to be concerned with 
Drop the hammer. Going from double to single. Double to single. with the SIG, uh, just my impression. Feels, feels a little bit better in terms of that transition. <laughs> ah, nice trigger, nice trigger. I think I have one magazine loaded, so I, uh, yeah, yes, I can't quit with uh, a magazine loaded. So that is a sweet gun. We have one more with the old Beretta. We never leave a loaded magazine. Could be dangerous, right? All right. The good old Beretta 92. There it is. Look at that. It's ready to chamber a torpedo. If you consider a 9mm a torpedo. A little bit of a stretch, maybe. Uh, let's just shoot a few different things here and play. bad not bad both of them well especially once you get into single action mode are a blast to shoot they really are they, because they've got such a nice grip and just not much of a pull so as with the 1911 that's one reason so many people shoot a 1911 well it's always single in single action mode once you get the safety off you know you've got a lighter trigger pull and the same with these once you've got it cocked and uh, so I don't know if that helps you any if you're just trying to decide on either one of these guns uh, they're both uh, pretty significant in terms of, I guess, uh, military use, federal agency use. Uh, they're both high-quality firearms. I guess most people would argue that the, uh, the SIG is maybe a higher-quality firearm. I don't know. I'll let you all argue about that. Uh, but they're, they're both uh, well-made and, and get the job done. And they're both really fun to shoot. Now, they're both a little too large for me. I've got my 19 over here, I, Gen 4. I'm not gonna, gonna mix it in and confuse the matter too much. But you know, uh, the one reason I always come back to a gun this size is, you know, look at the difference. Well, let's not exaggerate the size of the Beretta, but uh, <laughs> you know, we got a 19, a little Glock 19 here that's thinner and holds 15 rounds and is very effective, as you know, if you've ever fired one. You know, it's just a kind of a smaller operation, you know, just all the way around. No matter how you compare it with either one of these, it's just a, you know, it's a little guy, but it holds 15 rounds of 9mm, and it shoots really, really well. And, you know, just, uh, so it's always come back to that and the striker fire uh, mechanism is one reason it's, it's smaller. But, uh, but these guns, if you're looking for a range gun or even a gun to carry, you know, who might argue with the Navy SEALs or a lot of the federal agents to carry this gun right here, you know, especially if it's outside the belt and a lot of times being concealed is not that big a deal, you know, so a little bit large, larger than I like, but, uh, but a really, really fine gun, both of these. So anyway, for whatever that's worth, I'll give you a look at those two guns while we had the SIG here at the compound for another day. And uh, this baby's been at the compound a good while and it's not planning to leave, I don't guess. Life is good.